This Omaha Thermal. I know I put it on uh, Extraordinary yeah, Beliefs. Yeah, there Omaha. we go. There we go. There it is. So this yeah. is the one that went into the water. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they believe it went into the water, this particular one. But remember, there's 14 rolling right now at this time, at this exact second. There's 14 of them swarming the, the ship. So this is just, they have, what is this? What are they locked on? So here? this is thermal. So you mm -hmm. should see plumes of heat. You should see rotor wash. You should see wings. You should see something that allows this to propel. The shape you're seeing is the is the thermal signature, but they also believe that to be the actual signature or or, or shape of it there, and it blinks out. So some so they said splash splash in the video when you release it, but that doesn't mean it splashed into the water. Um, like there was no splash; it was just like they believed it went into the water. They actually sent this is not public, but I know it to be true. They sent a submarine to try to look for any wreckage of this thing. Uh, nothing. So imagine a hundred of these. Let's, let's say, I thought about this the other day. What if they were kamikaze drones, right? Okay, that's something. But the problem is they weren't, they, they, they don't, where did they launch yeah. from? And also, yeah. where's the wreckage where if they're yeah. kamikazes, they find it. So it's, a, it's, okay, so this is a real problem for the people fighting the ships. They feel that they failed in their duties because they weren't given the right opportunities to investigate and engage. And uh, it happens more regularly than our Navy would like to admit. That there are unknown objects in the South China Sea, out by Japan, off the East Coast, and as recently, I'll say, it, this year. What was the video, or was it just pho photographic, of the triangles in the sky? So that's a big topic of debate, right? So that was from the USS Russell. So on the USS Russell, let's say I have one person that comes to me. That's these things. Right. So the, the common wisdom is that they were... Oh, dude, thank you actually for this opportunity to explain this. So check it out. You see optically a triangle shape. Right. Okay, that's the radar footage from the Omaha. So you see optically the triangle shape. Now, people said I made it up, that me, that I made up pyramid in shape. Now, I put that in quotes when I first reported on it mm -hmm. because that's what was in the intelligence reports that happened to pass in front of our eyes that they have other sensors and that this thing was pyramid in shape. Try play, play it, Jamie. Triangle by yeah. angle of it observation. It ends right after this. I was just trying to get to the pyramids. I just want to like this, see it moving yeah. around. Why is it flashing? Do they know? So that that's the whole thing. So there, there's there's people that work in these UFO programs that did a, a full report on this, not, none of which is really public. So the, the internet says that this is bokeh. bokeh effect. So like the lens on the PBS 14, somebody taped a triangle onto it. So what you're seeing is a, a lens artifact. And then in Congress, they, they backtracked from it because they realized the PBS 14 doesn't have a triangle aperture to make a, a shape uh, of, of a pyramid looking thing. And they said it was the camera that was being shot through. They actually did that in the first congressional UFO hearing and say that it was that. So to back up, we don't know the shape of it. George and I don't know. All we know is that in briefing documents that we were exposed to, and they have other sensor systems to determine shape, they said triangle by angle of observation, pyramid in shape. So I can't justify to the public the shape because it's just, if they change right. their mind, hopefully they tell George. Mm -hmm. Here's the other part that people leave out of this discussion. They say it's bokeh effect. It's actually showing stars in the sky. They leave out this little inconvenient fact is that they have a range finder on the ship. These things were 700 feet off the deck of the ship. If it was a star, it would have fried Earth into a cinder <laughs> if it was 700 feet away. Uh, it's not a star. It, it was an object that was 700 feet off the ship. So. There, were, there were two at that moment. So there, there's a briefing slide that we acquired and made public and there was nothing in it to say it was classified it was a briefing slide and in that briefing slide if, if jamie finds it it actually tells you you know triangle by angle of observation 700 feet off of the the aft or whatever of the ship so look we're getting down to one piece of evidence what people forget is that this was a three-night event series with over 100 objects airborne at one time, surrounding 10 Navy warships. So the big question is, well, who knew our warships were there? And what Commander Fravor said at the hearing 
we don't test experimental shit on ourselves without warning people that we're doing it. He's like, that would be really dangerous. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in 2009, one of the ships, I've, I've spoken with one of the people fighting the ships. So they're called the TAOs, Tactical Action Officer. And what was reported to me was that when they were getting swarmed, that the Admiral ordered, what's the name of that rail gun or whatever? The, yeah. forget, I forget the name of it, some cool name, but it's like this really high powered shooting metal up in, and they're like, we had active flights. We had helos in the sky. Can you imagine somebody being like, we're getting swarmed, pull out the Gatling gun or whatever it is, you know? Mm. Like they, the whiz, the whiz or, oh, yeah. or something, I don't know. Um, this is still images. Yeah, yeah, this is the slide that was used in this uh, in a briefing that was prepared by the UAP task force. That was the briefing that was delivered to the Joint Chiefs to certain members of Congress. And in this time, there was two of them that were over this uh, ship? Oh, at this exact time? So, yeah, so three. See so, yeah, how they say three unknown UAS, um, unmanned mm -hmm. aerial systems. Because I asked, I asked the people that wrote this, mm -hmm. why did you say UAS and not uh, UAP or whatever? Right. And like, we didn't really have that language yet of, mm -hmm. of what to call it. So they, de they debated over it. They said that's the right term. So this image is to represent, you know, one of these. Uh, what does the S stand for in UAS? Unmanned aerial, aerial system. system. Oh, and there's another one. Unmanned. So that is one option. I, and I asked one of the guys, why did you say unmanned? Quite big enough to put a human man in? You know, mm. so he's like, that was just the best terminology that we had. He goes, now I would just straight up say you know, UAP, these were unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Right. Know? So I don't know. We're, we're kind of j just to wrap this is like 2019 is an important event because it's well documented. We were able to provide not just from the USS Russell, not just from the Omaha. We brought witnesses forward. I think it was like episode two of our show. Like we had people come in with their testimony. It's an important case because swarms happen all the time on these training ranges and with it, what appears to be an increased frequency. And, and people ask, why training ranges? And it, it might be because whoever these people are interested in what we're playing with. Hey, woman, since your man ain't got no heart, what's going on in my apartment tonight? I'll show you a real man. There you go. What? What? Fuck you. 